I Became a Package Mule, One Victim's Story. The victim's location has been changed to protect her identity. Let me start by saying that my scammer encounter wasn't a romance one. I wasn't looking for love or attention online from a man. But in the summer of 2018, I found myself divorced, living in a new apartment alone, and working a full-time job. It wasn't enough to make ends meet, though, and I was on the hunt for a second job. Something part-time that would work with my current schedule. I found an ad on Indeed, of all places, for a shipping receiving job. I had worked mostly in dispatch for a transport company, but I had a great resume and I thought I would try for this job. It was part-time, and the ad said, we will work around your schedule, which was very attractive to me as I wanted to keep my full-time job. I made contact with the ad, as I had on Indeed ads before, hitting the Apply Now button it took me to a legit looking website with an application process. I uploaded my resume and a cover letter and sent it away. The next day, I got an email back from this so-called company saying they were interested in interviewing me for the job. I was excited and asked the usual when, where, what time. The man emailed me back named James Harris. He said he was the hiring manager for the Ben Line Shipping and Cargo Company. He explained to me that their company deals with international shipments of goods across the U.S. to Vietnam. He said he was looking for someone to print labels and ship packages. He said they would pay me by the shipment, not by the hour, and I could work when I wanted and around my current schedule as long as the packages got sent out on time. I explained to him my situation and told him I was interested and asked where the place is located so I could go for a formal interview as I lived in Garden Grove, California. He told me the actual shipment place was in Rialto, California, which it wasn't too far from where I live, but enough that the commute every day would be a bit hard with the traffic, etc. He then told me I could work from home if I had a printer, and he could ship the packages to my house. I can unbox, inventory, email, take photos of the products, and then ship them off at this mailbox shipping center, which was about 25 minutes from my home. I was excited, and he sent me his company's website and the website of their international shipping center in Vietnam. I looked over everything closely, and it looked legit. He asked me if I had a smartphone to take photos, a printer, a car to drive the packages to the shipping location, and a bank account because they pay direct deposit. I had all these things. James then said he had other candidates that he was interviewing, but he would let me know within a few days and we could have a final phone interview if I was picked as a potential hiring employee. About four days went by before I was contacted via email by James. He said he would like to move forward with the hiring process and hire me and asked when a good time was to give a call. I told him any time and I gave him my number but it was also on my resume. Within moments I was getting a phone call from a Los Angeles number. It was the same number on the website. I spoke to a man who had a heavy accent. I thought maybe he was from China or somewhere in Asia. He said he was the hiring manager and would like to hire me. He said the company is very busy and he needed someone right away as the last person was not reliable and had gotten fired. I told him I was excited to start as soon as possible. He talked about the company, its products, and what I would be doing. He said I would need to mail packages daily and I told him I could do so after my job, which I was working from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I then uploaded him a copy of my license so he could verify my information, gave him my bank details for direct deposit, he even had me fill out a tax form like a real legit company would do when they hire a new employee. I was so excited to be working, making extra money to get me out of debt from my divorce and back into savings mode. About a week went by and James had emailed me several mailing labels and told me to print them and that the first wave of packages would be coming. I worked my regular job, and one evening, I came home to two boxes on my apartment doorstep. They did not have my name on them, but the name of a man named Carson Brooks. I was instructed to take a picture of the box, open the box, take a picture of the contents, and then box them back up and stick the new labels on them, and then take them to this certain mail center. The first two boxes were Dyson vacuum cleaners. The one had a label as a return address going to Vietnam and the other to a place in Northern California. I made my way to the mail center, which upon arrival I found out was run by a group of Vietnamese people who specialized in shipping boxes specifically over to Vietnam. 
The lady took my boxes, but she gave me an odd look, and I was literally the only non-Vietnamese person in the mail center, and no one there was speaking English, and the ones that did did not speak it very clearly to me. So it was a bit odd, and we had a struggle with the transaction due to a language barrier. The mail center was not a typical one. It was in the back of an Asian market. I found it odd, but as I said, the website and everything looked legit, as did the company. After the first two boxes were shipped, I got an email from James saying he received the confirmation that I had sent them via a tracking number that he was sent. The next morning, my bank account had two wire transfer deposits from LCD International out of Vietnam. The bank held the deposits for seven days, but they cleared. I thought everything was legit and going well. Fast forward a few more days, and I come home from work to find five small boxes on my doorstep. I was instructed to print the label, take the photos, etc., and send them again. This became a regular thing, sometimes twice a week or more. Basically, I was making $75 to $100 a week doing these package mailings. The labels were prepaid, so I felt everything was on the up and up. One evening, I got home to find a large box on my doorstep. I opened it, and it was an air conditioner unit. I did my usual picture, print, label, etc., but this time I emailed James and let him know I was going to mail a package from the UPS store that was literally up the street from my house because it was raining and we had high winds and I didn't really want to drive in the bad weather and it was getting dark. Well, James exploded via email in anger telling me I must go to the same shipping center I always go to and how dare I try to change things as I am his employee. I was shocked, but at the same time I was scared. I didn't want to lose this paying job. So, I drove to the market, at the Asian market in the shipping center. This kept going for a month. Shipping boxes, getting paid, I was paying off bills during this time. It was an awesome and easy enough job. About six weeks into this job, I started getting more and more packages. It went from a few a week to ten a day. I was exhausted and I told James I still have a full-time job, so this is getting tiring. Getting off work and having to work more, mailing these packages, rushing him to get to the shipping center before they closed. I asked him if I could possibly just go back to part-time. And he said maybe he could hire another person. But James said I was the only one he could trust. He told me he had an important package coming and that I need to ship it out right away. I told him I would, and in two days it arrived. I unboxed it, and it was a bunch of brand new iPhones, seven, maybe eight of them. They all went to the same place in Vietnam. Problem was, I got home very late from work, and it was a Saturday night, and the Asian market slash shipping center where I shipped from would be closed until Monday. I didn't bother emailing James. I assumed he could track the delivery, and he knew that they would be mailed on Monday. I went to bed that night and woke up to over 40 emails from James asking where, why the packages were not sent. Had I betrayed him? Had I stolen from him? I emailed him back, letting him know I got home late from work and that the shipping marketplace was closed until Monday. Well, he was furious. He accused me of stealing from him, lying, and that the packages should have went out. I ended up trying to call this company number, but I found it to be a Google Voice number. This set off some red flags. I asked James about it, and he blasted me again via email, calling me a liar, and that I had stolen from him and he would send the police to my house. I told him I could mail the boxes from the UPS store by my house, but he refused to let me. It had to be at that market. I told him Monday first thing I would mail them, but he was becoming quite angry. I told him I'm quitting this job. It was too much stress, and between my full-time job and this, I was exhausted. Box after box after box, and driving to mail them. The money wasn't worth it. I'm done. James continued to abuse me via email, calling me names. I told him this is not professional, and on Monday, I shipped all the phones back to the sender, which was a woman's name in San Francisco. I told James what I did and he was furious. He told me he would call the police, have me arrested for theft. I told him I didn't steal, but sent the packages back where they came from and had proof with a tracking number. This is when the real nightmare began. I went to work Monday, and each day after work from Monday through Friday, I was flooded with packages on my doorstep. I emailed James and he refused to answer my emails. When I called the company, Yep, Google Voice. Went straight to voicemail. I was getting packages of perfume, rings, playstations, phones, and other household goods like pots and pans and electronics. It was totally out of control. 
I contacted the postmaster and let them know that I did not order any of these items and all were being sent in various people's names, none in my own name. The postmaster said he would send someone to pick them up, but they only came when I wasn't home and never sent anyone back out again even though I requested they do. I started to refuse packages. Then, one night a car pulled up to my home and sat outside. I did not know the person and I felt uneasy. You know that gut feeling you get? It was a Vietnamese man. He stayed for a while, then left before I had the chance to call the police, and I wasn't sure if he was waiting for someone, an Uber delivery driver, or what. I was paranoid. Then, I got an email from James telling me that he sent someone to collect the items I have stolen from his company. At this point I was scared and was going to go to the police after work the next day. That next day I did so and filed a report. I told the officer what's been going on and he told me it's a scam, that the items were likely illegally obtained through stolen credit cards and sent to my home. I was a package mule. The police told me they would patrol more around my apartment complex and that the case went to a federal level due to the shipping center accepting these packages and they felt that it might be connected with an international scam. I blocked James on my email and closed out and opened a new bank account. The police gave me a case number and told me to be careful and to call them if anyone shows up at my apartment. I continued with my regular day job. The packages kept coming and I kept refusing. Sometimes I would come home to find packages on my doorstep, other times nothing, and sometimes notes from UPS and FedEx that they tried to deliver, but the packages needed a signature. I never responded or went to pick them up. This became a nightmare. My neighbor told me while I was at work that several packages, including a large TV, were delivered to my door, and that a few hours later, a man in a black car came and picked them up. My neighbor described him as the Vietnamese man that I saw outside of my place one night. I was terrified. What I had gotten myself into? Who were these people? Who was that man? Another week went on, and the packages kept coming. I was living in hell one box at a time. Finally, the police told me that my case had been sent on to an FBI investigator and the postmaster was involved in this case as well. Well, I spoke to the FBI field agent who came to my home and I told him everything. He informed me that there are criminal gangs that have victims ship stolen items overseas and the shipping market I was selling, sending them from was likely either involved in the scam or knew of the scam and turned a blind eye to it. While this may sound extreme, I was scared for my safety and I ended up packing up and moving to another location. I have since closed my email and changed my name on social media and my photos to private. I took my resume off indeed and learned a hard lesson. The law enforcement officers I spoke with did not charge me with anything and said that I was innocent in my actions as I truly thought I was working for a legit company, but they told me it could have been worse. The website for the so-called company is now gone and the number goes directly again to Google Voicemail. This was a hard, scary, and expensive lesson as I had to foot the cost of moving for my own safety. If a job sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I made decent money for doing very little other than printing labels and shipping boxes, but it cost me so much more. Remember, you can't make easy money and you can't trust even the most reliable company websites. They make them look very believable. Always investigate and Google. I wish I had done that, as the real company does exist, but the address and phone number were not the same. These scammers simply copied a real website and changed the names of the CEO, the address, and the phone number. If I had done my homework, I wouldn't have been in this mess. A hard lesson and a nightmare in boxes. Thanks for letting me share my encounter with the scammer. And we'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. It's a little bit of an unusual and different type of scam story, but these type of scams happen every day. And a lot of times the victims end up getting involved and charged with different postal crimes, accepting stolen merchandise, etc. So she was very lucky. And scammers are on all websites, including Indeed, which is a very reputable job search site. So always do your homework. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Thanks for letting us share your story. If you'd like to share your encounter with a scammer and have it narrated into a story, you can find us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. We will narrate it and change any names to protect your privacy. Thanks for watching. If you like this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, if you need help, you can find us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. We'll see you next time.